Hi guys, um, before we get into the video, I'd just like to take a few minutes of your time to ask for your support for something that we're going to be doing soon, and that is... It's the Trek 26, which is a walk that the Alzheimer's Society organise every year, and we're doing the one in London on July the 21st in memory of a few of our friends who have either lost somebody um, from their family or have a member of their family suffering with dementia. We're very lucky in that we don't have anyone in our family that suffers from any form of, of dementia, but because of we're you know we're an aging population, we are all going to be living longer and these diseases need our support, they need our money, they need our time, and so we are going to be walking and fundraising um, in support of the Alzheimer's Society. Um, so the Alzheimer's Society is a registered charity in the UK. Its number is 296645 and it raises money and supports the NHS and various other trusts and foundations with not only looking into how we can treat dementia but also supporting families as well. So basically we're going to be walking 13 miles around London which is going to be fun and um, any support you can give will be absolutely fantastic. So the web address for the Just Giving page is www.justgiving.com forward slash fundraising forward slash team boxel. Now I'll put that up at the bottom of the screen and also I'll put a link in the video description as well. So anything you can give, a pound, two pound, whatever, just that would be absolutely fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much guys and I think, is that it? Yeah. Yeah, so now you can go and enjoy the video that you actually clicked on. So thank you very much guys and hope to, uh, hope for your support. Thank you. Thank you. All right, James here. And this is another repair video and this time we're having a look at this Asus laptop and this isn't so much of a repair actually, it's more of an upgrade because technically there's actually nothing wrong with this laptop. It does work but unfortunately it is really, really slow, like embarrassingly slow. The lady that gave me this to look at, I think she described it as impossibly slow and that's a pretty good description of how this thing is running right now. Now. Initially, I went down the kind of logical train of thought and I thought, well, the laptop's apparently only two years old and, you know, the spec is actually pretty good. So there's no technical reason why it should be that slow. So I kind of thought maybe a software issue, maybe maybe like malware, virus or whatever. And as soon as I actually got the laptop and looked at it, realised the make and model of this laptop and I knew straight away exactly what the problem is. Now the problem is actually with this thing. Now this isn't actually out of this laptop, this is just one that I've got laying around. This is a hard drive or a hard disk and this is the part in the laptop that actually stores all of your files. So it's the long-term storage. Now this particular drive is a particular make and model that's used in a, a lot of these OEMs laptops. So for example, like Asus, uh, Toshiba, HP, uh, Acer, Lenovo, just to name a few, they all use this particular make and model of drive. And the reason why they use it is because quite frankly, it's cheap, like really cheap. These kind of laptops, these kind of family mobile series laptops, um, consumer grade laptops are generally built to a price and anything that they can cheap on they will and they unfortunately they do cheap out on the hard drives a little bit now these hard drives are like when I say cheap if you order these in batches of a thousand you can pick up one terabyte versions of these for about a tenner each if you buy them in quantities of a thousand or more directly from the supplier in China now that's cheap they are actually quite reliable, which is an unusual factor here because when you consider that usually cheap equals crap, um, in this case, actually cheap is actually quite reliable. So that's actually why they use uh, these particular hard drives. Unfortunately, their downfall is the fact that they are slow, like proper slow. We're talking sub 100 megabits per second write speed and I think read speeds of even slower than that. Um, sorry, I think I said that the wrong way around actually. Read speeds of below 100 megabits and I think write speeds of about maybe 50. It, they're very, very, very slow. 
So you do take a massive performance hit for the price break with these things, but unfortunately they will pick them because they're cheap and reliable and that, as far as they're concerned, that's all that matters. So yeah, this laptop obviously has that particular make and model of drive and that is why it's incredibly slow. As soon as I got this laptop, the first thing I did was I uninstalled any unnecessary software. So anything that wasn't necessary, gone. Um, I disabled any features that just completely weren't necessary that were possibly chewing up um, hard drive resources. Ended those processes, stopped the services. I've done all the usual stuff you do to try and limit the amount of uh, resource drain on your hard disk literally just windows and antivirus and all the appropriate drivers that are you know needed for windows to boot and the drive usage was still in like the 80 to 100 percent range like usage wise so yeah it's just not going to cut it windows 10 unfortunately is too um, reliant on the hard drive being kind of quite fast because it does store a lot of paging file and it does have a lot of disk usage during its kind of normal uh, working procedure it doesn't store a lot on the memory so um, unfortunately that's just a thing of Windows 10 that's just how it works but it does mean that if you use drives that are not particularly speedy um, you run into a problem so obviously we need to remedy this issue and the way we're going to do that is we're going to rip the turd out of this one and we're going to replace it with this um, Samsung 850 Evo SSD which is a solid state drive. Now the reason why I'm using the Samsung Evo SSDs is because quite frankly I've had such great success with these. I've installed these into loads of devices, laptops, computers, servers, you name it and every single time I've had good success with them I've seen massive performance gains and in terms of quality, I mean, they're, they're very good quality drives. They offer a five-year warranty on these. That in itself is just worth paying the extra money for just to get that peace of mind, that five-year warranty. So the quality of these, they're obviously um, vouching for with that warranty. And in terms of reliability, well, in the three years, nearly three years that I've been using these drives, I have never, ever had one fail. I've installed quite possibly more than 100 of these never ever seen one fail I've never had a callback to say that one's failed they just keep going and going touch wood and all that because I've probably jinxed it now I bet I'm going to get a phone call in the morning to say my laptop won't boot but no in terms of quality um, very good also they're very stern on their performance claims so whereas most SSDs are a bit kind of exaggerated on their claims of performance, these ones are actually very good and I found that they're very close to what they claim in terms of their performance. Usually I'm seeing within 5% of what they claim, which is very unusual because usually these things are tested in absolutely ideal, perfect lab conditions and in the real world using you know different styles of hardware, you're never going to see the exact kind of performance claims that they claim on the package but with these ones I found that they're actually very close so uh, very good there. The ones I used to use before these were the Corsair ones and I've stopped using those now because well to put it quite frankly they were shite. Uh, I've had a few of them fail so they're obviously not very reliable and also in terms of their performance claims I couldn't get anywhere near what they were claiming like not even within 50% of their claims so they're very exaggerated with their um, with their performance claims, so I don't I don't really use those anymore. In fact, I don't use them at all, and I stick to either the Samsung or the Intel ones. I usually find are pretty good as well. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to stick this into here, and hopefully we're going to see a massive performance gain when it comes to um, the speed of in which things load and actually the boot up time of this laptop. Now. Unfortunately, once I've done that, I've actually got to take the drive out of this thing and I've got to put it into an ATA API bridge and recover all the information off the old hard drive and store it somewhere safe. Um, which on a drive that's got a performance of less than 100 megabits per second, that's going to be fun. Actually, no, fun is probably the wrong word because that implies it's a good thing. Um, fun relative to threading a cocktail umbrella up my piss hole opening it and then pulling it back out through my piss hole. Fun relative to that, so not very fun. So anyway, um, speaking of fun, 
uh, we're gonna have a bit of a problem with this one because as you can see, on the bottom of this thing, there's actually no panels to get to the drive. This is kind of one of those new styles of laptops and a lot of modern laptops are kind of uh, doing this now where they don't actually give you access to anything underneath with the little panels like they used to. Basically, if you want to change anything, you've got to strip the whole laptop apart. And I've seen a few of them like that and the MacBooks are also like that as well. Now you can clearly see where the hard drive is because there's this kind of square indent here. But yeah, this is gonna be fun. And I'll be honest with you, I've never taken, I've, I mean, I've worked on these Asus ones, but I've never worked on this particular one before. So this is new for me. I've got to try and work out how to get this thing apart and get to the hard drive. So yeah, so we'll see, uh, see how that one goes. <laughs> First of all, before I actually swap the drive over, what I wanna do is I'm actually gonna fire this thing up and in real time, I'm gonna show you actually how slow this thing is. Now it, Knowing my luck, it's probably going to behave now, but I, believe me, it's really slow. So I'm actually going to show you now. And before I give it back, I'm definitely going to give this thing a good thorough clean because it is absolutely filthy. There's like cat hair, fingerprints. Uh, I don't even know what that is. Like some sort of like possibly food looking sticky substance. I mean... I mean like possibly like pot noodle or something so yeah anyway it needs a thorough clean I'm not gonna lie that tasted pretty gross I don't know what that was I probably shouldn't have done that anyway so let's get this thing fired up I can show you how shit it is and then we can get started on actually ripping this thing apart and uh, well not ripping it apart but you know what I mean taking it apart carefully and uh, and replacing the drive so yeah now, I think the best way to demonstrate actually how slow something is, is to actually do it in real time. So I'm not gonna jump cut this in real time. I'm just gonna press the power button and we're gonna boot this thing up and then I'll show you this thing trying to work. Asus in search of incredible. Yeah, well, it's certainly not incredible in this case. So we can see Windows is starting to boot, indicated by the little uh, UEFI loading thingy, whatever you call that. Very technical, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, I can see why actually she got very fed up with this because already that's like embarrassing. We've not even got the welcome screen yet. I mean, if it gets too ridiculous, like this is actually awkward. This is kind of like when you're talking to somebody you don't know and then you kind of both go quiet. It's very awkward. Like I'm just sitting here looking at a spinny thing. You're sitting here looking at a spinny thing. It's just, yeah, I may ha actually have to jump cut this. I mean, we're already up to like maybe three minutes by this point, literally three minutes. And all oh, the clock's wrong for some reason. It thinks it's one in the morning. I don't know why. It's definitely not one in the morning. I can tell you that now. So yeah, I mean, it's still actually not loaded. I've still not got any of my, any of the icons in the taskbar. Um, so yeah. Incidentally, why that's loading, um, if you're in the market for a tablet, um, don't buy one of these, the Amazon Fire tablet, whatever it is, because they are utter shite. I don't know if the newer ones are any better, um, but these particular ones are rubbish. I have literally had so many of these in, possibly 20 in the last, um, I don't know, year, uh, all with the same issue, just basically blacking out, not charging, not doing anything, not responding. Um, so yeah very very unreliable pieces of shit so don't buy those anyway so i think we're kind of loaded now so i mean that's slow enough as it is but it's when you try and load things like if we try and load google chrome for example i mean i've clicked the icon and it's just literally yeah it's and it's churning away like the hard drive activity light is just on constantly and i can just hear the drive just churning away and I mean, it's trying to load Google. It's just windows are just whiting out and just not loading. Um, 
and it's it's just like this all the time. And to be fair, that's pretty quick. I mean, we've got no internet connection at the moment because I've not connected it to the Wi-Fi, but that's pretty quick. The first time I did that, it literally took a minute just to load Google Chrome. Um, yeah, and things like Word. So if I try and load up Word now, it just... And I can still hear that hard drive churning. It's just constantly churning away. Okay, so before we start <coughs> stripping it down or doing anything drastic, and definitely before we take the hard drive out, there is one thing that we need to quickly do, and that is retrieve the Windows 10 product key for this uh, installation of Windows, because um, you'll notice if you buy a new laptop now that has Windows 10 or 8.1 and above, you'll notice that they don't put the sticker on the bottom anymore. There used to be a little sticker on there, which was your product key, and that would have your 25 character product key there, and that would be your little license sticker to say that you've got a genuine uh, license for that operating system. Unfortunately, they don't put them on the bottom anymore. I mean, that's too logical, right? Why would you put really useful information that the customer might need to see at some point during the course of owning this laptop and put it conveniently on the bottom where it can be read at any point when it's needed? Why would you do that? That's just too convenient, right? So they don't do that anymore. Thankfully, you can retrieve it from Windows itself. Now, you can do it through command prompt. There are programs you can download that will do it. Thankfully, I've got a little script file on this little fishy flash disk thing. Um, it is so wanky. I mean, I just don't like it. TDK, what are you doing? Seriously, guys. What, I mean, oh, it's weird. Anyway, so I've got a little script file on here. And if I can find a USB port to shove this fishy thing in. I mean, oh look, it looks like it's eating the laptop. <sighs> it's just so wanky. Right, anyway, so. Um, so we'll open that. And essentially, it's just a double click. And bingo, there's the product key. So all I need to do is make a note of that. And I've got a piece of paper. I need a pen. I've got a pen somewhere. I'm really disorganised. Good. Okay, so I've made a note of that, and I've double, triple, quadruple, and octagonally, if that's even a real word, um, checked that that is correct before we go any further. So good, that's done. You may go away now. And I can unplug the uh, really tacky, fishy thing. Anyway, so that's it now. So we can shut the laptop down, and hopefully, I think it's installed some updates while I was doing this. Oh no, good. Okay, it's not asking me to do updates. Brilliant. Okay, so let that shut down, which may take a while. Okay, so that's now shut down. So I want to lay this thing on its top. So I've got this little mat, which I like to put out here just to stop the uh, laptop from getting scratched up. Now, obviously, usual rules when you're taking a laptop apart, disconnect the AC adapter so there's no power going to the laptop and remove the battery. Now, unfortunately, in this case, I can't remove the battery because they're fitted inside. I don't like the idea of that, but anyway. So, uh, judging by this, I think we're gonna have to undo all these screws and then get a spudger and just undo all the clips around the outside, and this bottom piece probably just lifts straight off. I have no idea because I've never done one of these before, so we'll find out, won't we? Okay, so we're gonna need a Phillips 001. And we'll start removing the screws. I've got my little magnetic tray here, which I don't want to put too close to the hard drive because that's got a very powerful magnet in there. But it just helps me not to lose the screws because they will be magnetically attracted. I'm assuming all these screws are the same because there's no little arrows in the plastic indicating that they're a different type of screw. So I think they are going to be pretty much all the same. Right, good. That's all the screws, I think. Yep, good. Okay, so let's see. No, might need a spudger. Okay, so judging by the fact that the connectors are all recessed around this plastic bottom piece, I'm going to assume that actually it's the top piece that has to come off. Okay, so I've got a plastic spudger here because I don't particularly want to chew up the plastic. As I say, it is quite chewy. And that should be enough to free up the clips, which I can hear kind of clicking. And I'll just kind of run around. There we go. Yeah. So it sounds like it's like breaking, but it's not. It's just the little clips I'm doing. There we go. So we just run all the way around and undo all the clips. And the motherboard in this is probably going to be about the size of a peanut because they pretty much are these days. The motherboard will probably only be about like that big. <laughs> 
it'll probably only take up like a little bit and then it'll probably come down this sort of way here just to have a somewhere to mount the USB ports. The last one of these laptops like similar to this that I undone, the lap the motherboard only actually took up about a quarter of the space of the laptop. Now this keyboard at the top here is going to have a ribbon connector on here, no doubt, so I'm going to have to be very careful. I'm going to lift, no, there's still another clip, got this over this side I think, there we go. So we'll lift very carefully, and yep, there is a ribbon connector, there's one for the trackpad and the keyboard. So we'll just very carefully unplug the one for the keyboard. And then very carefully unplug the one for the trackpad and boom. There we go. That's it. So that's the keyboard off. So we'll put that to one side safely. And yep, yeah, exactly. What did I say? Literally the, <laughs> the motherboard is just like that big. Whereas if you took apart an older laptop, the motherboard is literally near enough all the size of the thing. But anyway, so yeah so as you can see there's your fitted battery at the top there we could actually remove that but to be honest i don't think we really need to um, we should be okay so anyway there's the hard drive and um, what we're going to do now is try and work out how to take the hard drive out i think it just lifts up and then pulls out it's the same as the others that i've kind of dealt with nope there is actually another screw beg your pardon so we'll take that one out Okay, and we'll lift that up, wriggle it out. Hey, hey, there we go. So, job done. So, let's take this out of its carrier because it is, it's got a little cage around it. So, we'll just pop that off. Those are tiny little screws, so we're not going to get them confused. And now we need to get the SSD out of its box. Let's, uh, there's the all the gump that comes with it. Oh, what have they done? They've taped it to the bottom, that's weird. Anyway, we don't need any of that crap. That's the important bit, right? Okay, bingo. So we just literally slide that back in, click, and then put the little screw back in. Boom, we're done, that's it. So now we can pop the keyboard back on. Now I'm not actually going to clip it back on for the time being. I'm just going to rest it on the top um, just in case that has to come out again for whatever reason, you never know. So it's a good idea not to actually fix this pack down until we are 100% that you know we're ready to do so. So I'll just pop the ribbon cable back in for the keyboard and then pop the ribbon cable back in for the trackpad. Just rest that down on there, fire the laptop up. We've got the little light we have the splash screen, but I don't hear the hard drive. See, this is really odd because usually when you turn the laptop on, the first thing you hear is the hard drive spinning up and now you can't hear it. It just doesn't sound right. Anyway, so we've gone straight into the BIOS because, um, well, it's not actually BIOS, it's UEFI, but whatever. Anyway, um, simply because it's not found an operating system and because it's a UEFI boot it's just gone straight into the BIOS because it knows obviously there's an empty drive in there. Okay so before we start first of all we're going to need a copy of Windows 10 ISO on a flash drive. I always install Windows using a flash drive as you saw from the previous video it's so much quicker and also I can update this ISO weekly so that it's got all the updates slipstreamed into it because otherwise there'll be a shit ton of updates to do because Windows 10 is now been out for quite a while and if it's, this was an original distribution then it would have quite a lot of updates so we need that and before I start the installation I am just going to plug the laptop into the AC adapter because I think the battery is getting a little bit low and I don't want the battery running out halfway through the installation. That would not be good. So I'll just plug that in. Is it that side? Nope, it's the other side. I'm just used to it because mine's on that side. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's plugged in. Cool. Okay, we've got the orange light. Brilliant. So what we'll do first of all is we'll plug that in and uh, we'll start the laptop. Now, to get into the boot menu on Asus, I believe you hold down the escape key, if I remember rightly. So we'll turn it on, hold down the escape key, and it should hopefully go into a boot menu. 
Yep, okay, so we've got the generic flash disk UEFI partition one, so we'll select that. And it's now gonna reboot, and then it will do all of its thing. There we go, so you can see the little spinny thing. So it started the installation. Now this is a, a UEFI boot, so it's gonna be slightly different to what we're used to when it comes to installing Windows. Okay, so uh, this is all the usual gump. So obviously English United Kingdom, that's all good. Next, install now. And that is essentially gonna install Windows 10 on that SSD. Okay, so this is all the usual stuff, except the user license agreement, no one ever reads. Um, so what we wanna do is we wanna um, custom install because we're not actually upgrading because this is a blank hard drive in here. So we've got unallocated space. This is the um, kind of drive tools that we're used to here. So we'll click new, click apply. It's gonna create a 100 megabyte partition as it always does. And then it should hopefully once it's done that, can sometimes take a while, because it's obviously got a, there we go. Yeah, so we've got a, a number of different things on here. Don't worry about those. Basically, we want to install it on the biggest one, which is this bottom one. So we'll click next. And basically, it's now going to install Windows 10. Okay, so let's start with region. Is this correct? Yes, United Kingdom. Just a moment. Can you Your actually... keyboard is set to United Kingdom. Would you like to stick with that? That is very annoying. Yes. Do you also type with another keyboard layout? No. Now, let's get you connected to a network. That way, you can get updates, apps, and cat videos as soon as possible. <laughs> and cat videos. <laughs> Type what you want to name your account. With an offline account, the only way to retrieve your password, if you forget it, is with a hint. So make sure it's memorable. Same as before. Okay. Hey, look, that's me, Cortana. <laughs> Can I have permission to use the info I need to do my best work? No. These are the settings Microsoft recommends. Go ahead and review them, and select accept when you're ready. Off, off, oh no, keep location on, uh, keep that on, relevant ads off, accept. This is, this is a piece okay, of piss. Okay, that's the last step. Hooray, so can I have my screen resolution back to normal now, Almost please? done now. We just need to get a few more things polished up for you, and Windows will be all yours. Looking forward to helping out. You can help out by kissing my... Right, so we're pretty much ready to go now. And I think Windows 10 will pretty much have all the drivers on its database for this laptop. There may be a few that we've got to install. And then I'll just have to reinstall the programs that uh, she had on there before. And also I've got to do a recovery. Well, not a recovery, but I've got to take the data off of this old hard drive and put that on a separate disk that I can give her with the laptop. Um, and then that's it, basically, we're all done. And then obviously I've got to screw it all back together. I can't give it back to her like this, because that's, that's, that's poor customer service right there. <laughs> okay, so we're basically on the desktop now. And I'm first thing I'm gonna do is just quickly check um, for drivers. I think, um, as I say, it's gonna have most of the drivers already on its database okay so there are a few that it hasn't got pci data acquisition signal processing controller pci encryption decryption device sm bus controllers okay so i've installed some of the drivers it's installing some of the drivers in the background so the screen might sort of you know flash and do its thing it's just installed the intel graphics so that's good um so i'm going to pull the installation flash drive out now before i catch that and tear the usb socket out the side of the laptop I've plugged the network cable in and basically what I'm going to do now is install a temporary antivirus and the easiest way to do that is through a web browser and the one I'm going to install is Google Chrome because I need to install it anyway because that's the web browser she was using before and then we'll get rid of the desktop icon because we don't need it if it's in the taskbar and we'll double click that boom there it is look at that so it's, it's very very quick now as before you'd load Google Chrome and it would white out for about 30 seconds before you could actually use it. 
Okay, so I'm gonna do a quick benchmark now. So I've got this benchmark tester. Now, somehow I've managed to get it stuck in German. I have no idea how, but um, I can't actually read German, so I don't know how to get it back. But it doesn't matter, because all the numbers mean the same thing, and we know what these are. So all we're really worried about is sequential and 4K. So let's run this, and we'll get some real-time numbers. And I'm doing this with a, a three gigabyte segment. So let's, uh, let's see how this goes. Okay, so we've got some numbers and we're reading at around uh, sequentially at around 454 megabytes per second and we're writing at 425 megabytes per second. Anyway, so that's it. So we've got everything kind of installed, ready to go. I've got a few extra programs to install um, like Microsoft Office and stuff which she'll have to then log in with her Microsoft account to activate it but I can at least install it for now. Um, and also I need to give this thing a physical clean because it's absolutely filthy and I need to put this thing back together. So first of all, let's get it back together, which is going to be really easy and we can start right now by literally just clipping the, uh, the face top plate back down again. Of course the CD drive is going to open, so we can just pop all the clips back down like so. And then literally just pop all the screws back in. And that's pretty much it. So in effect, it's actually just as easy really as the laptops that have the little um, windows at the bottom because essentially you are just undoing the screws at the bottom and then just unclipping it. Okay, so I've got a soft um, cloth here and I've got some cleaner. So what I'm gonna do is just basically put some cleaner on the rag and this is just special cleaner I use for this kind of thing and just basically give it a good proper clean. And more importantly, we need to get rid of this food off of here. This stuff is also safe for LCDs as well, so I can clean the screen as well. I mean, I make it sound like I'm being judgmental. I mean, my laptop is also filthy. It's just the nature of the beast, unfortunately. You have a laptop, it's portable, you have it on your lap, so you are gonna eat food while using it. It's, <laughs> it's inevitable that it's gonna get filthy. Oh, I found, I think that's a lady pube. It's curly. Anyway, I need to do this to mine at some point as well because mine is absolutely filthy. A clean laptop and dirty mind, that's how it should be. Okay, so the last final thing to do is to just change the product key and activate Windows. So we got the product key off the um, old system earlier. So I'm literally just gonna click on here to change product key. And I can now actually type in uh, I can click change product key and I can type in the product key which I got earlier so I'll just do that now. Now while we're on the subject of product keys I must correct a rumour that's going around the internet and in fact I've heard a lot of people say this as well and it's just simply not true. So there's a rumour going around that basically it is illegal to reuse a product key more than once. So once you've used your product key and you've activated Windows you then have to bin it and it can't be reused if you wanna reinstall Windows on that laptop again, or PC or whatever it is, you have to go out and you have to buy a new product key every time you reinstall Windows, even on the same device. Well, yeah, guess what? The bullshit police are here to correct that one. Woo, bullshit police, bullshit, warning, bullshit. It is absolute rubbish, nonsense bobbins. It is not illegal to reuse a product key as long as you only reuse it on the same machine that it was originally activated with. So for example, this machine, I reused the product key that was already on that machine from the OEM. So that would have been the original product key. Now, when you actually install Windows and activate with that product key, it will take the machine ID, which is based on the serial number of your motherboard, and it will put that machine ID with the product key and put it on their database. And that is it. That product key is now null and void. You can't use it on any other machine, but you can reuse it on that machine because it has the same machine ID. Now, if I change the motherboard in this laptop, then I would need to replace the uh, product key because it would be a different machine ID. But as long as you do it on the same computer, I could install Windows on this three times a day for the next five years if I wanted and reuse the same product key every single time and it is not illegal to do so. 
This is basically a rumor that's made up by repair techs who want you to spend more money because what they do is they say, oh, you know, I've got to reinstall Windows, but unfortunately it's illegal to reuse the product key. So you're gonna to have to give me some more money so I can buy another Windows license. And they don't actually buy a new Windows license with it. What they do is they put the money in their pocket and they just reuse the product key, which is exactly what they said they weren't gonna do. And you think that you've brought a new product key when you actually haven't, you've just given away money for nothing. I'm on to you guys. It's, it's not a funny game, but it is a game that they play. So be warned, if they tell you that, you turn around and you say, that is absolute rubbish. I know that's not true because the bullshit police have told me it's not true. So there you go. Okay, so basically we are all done, really. I mean, I've still got to take all the information off that hard drive. So I've got the thing here, but I'm not going to bother filming that because basically it consists of me slotting that hard drive into there and pressing a button and that's not particularly interesting. So I'll just do that as and when, and I'll leave it to it. But the actual uh, laptop is done. So now all I've got to do is basically go upstairs, do all the paperwork, and that's ready to go back to its owner. And hopefully um, she'll enjoy the fact that it's so much faster now and it's performing so much better. So there you go, I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, if you do enjoy my videos, feel free to subscribe. The button is down the bottom there. And uh, yeah, if you click that and click the little bell symbol and you'll be alerted whenever I upload new videos. If, you, uh, if you've got any questions or constructive criticism, bung it in the comments section below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. And I'll put any um, useful links and any information in the video description. So if you think that there might be anything in there that you're interested in, go and check that out. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Nice one.